Today I'm going to be taking a look at a fairly new front end for the Miu Mini. And if you like the simplicity of stock Miu, but also love the range of systems and features that Onion OS provides, then this might just be perfect for you. Let's take a look. Bastard OS, as this new front end is called, is, as the author describes it, an amalgamation of what he likes from stock and Onion, and then smashing them together to create this new front end. And to try it out, all you're going to need is a spare micro SD card. You're going to need to have the card formatted as FAT32 to use in the Miu Mini. And I'm assuming that if you already have a Miu Mini, then you already know how to format it like this. However, if your card is bigger than 32 gig or you aren't sure how to format it, then I've left links in the description below to help you with this. Personally, I'm going to be using a 64 gig card that I've already pre-formatted for this video. You can find Bastard OS on GitHub at this address, and I'll leave a link to it in the description below. The page lists a number of the features of the new front end, as well as a good number of screenshots, in case you want to get an idea of what you'll be getting before installing it. And looking through the screenshots, I'm sure you'll see for yourself what the author means when he talks about it being a mixture of stock and onion. To download it, click on the link at the right of the screen that says latest. That'll take you to this page, and all you have to do is click on the link to the zip file for Bastard OS to kick off the download, save it somewhere safe, and when the download is complete, unzip the file. At this point, I should point out that to use this with your Miu Mini, you'll need to have the latest firmware installed, which at the time of the recording is the 19th of April release. You can check this under the System Information option on your Miu Mini. And if you need to update, then I'll leave a link below with more information on how to do this. Navigate down in the unzipped file until you get to the folder called .tmp underscore update. There should be a readme text file next to it, which you can take a look at if you want, but it doesn't really tell you much more than was on the website. I've already got my FAT32 formatted card inserted, so I'm just going to drag and drop the .tmp underscore update folder onto the card. Once the copy is completed, safely eject the card and put it into your Miu Mini. Then power on. You'll see the Bastard OS splash screen and straight away you'll notice the Onion OS influence. Just let it run through its setup process, which will take a few minutes. When it's completed, you'll then see this screen saying, Welcome to the Bastardization. So just press the A button and you'll get to this screen, which shows you ways to raise or lower the volume or screen brightness. Personally, I was a bit confused by this, as there is already a perfectly good scroll wheel at the side of the device for raising or lowering volume, which has got to be a lot easier than trying to remember and fiddle around with key combinations. But I guess having more options never hurts. Pressing A again will show you more key combo options for adjusting settings. Press A once more and you are shown the locations that you need to be aware of for things like your ROMs and save files and save states. Further presses of the A button give you a bit more information about the way Bastard OS has been configured. How you can choose a RetroArch alternative to the standalone emulators if you want to, as well as credits for the developers of the code that was leveraged to build Bastard OS with the last screen telling you that it is about to turn off and reminding you to leave the .tmp underscore update folder on the card. So press A one final time and your Miu Mini will shut down. Once it's off, eject your micro SD card and put it back into your computer. Browsing the card, you'll notice that Bastard OS has created a number of directories. And if you click on the ROMs folder, you can see that it has set up a number of folders for different systems. So we just need to drop our ROMs into those folders. Similarly, we also have a BIOS folder into which we need to drop our BIOS files. Now, rather than hunt around every time I set up a new device and having to search for the BIOS files that various consoles support, what I do is keep one folder containing the BIOS files for just about every console I'm ever likely to be going to emulate. On the one hand, this is a horribly inefficient way of doing things, as it uses way more card space than it needs to. But on the other hand, it saves me a hell of a lot of time, as I never need to hunt around for the appropriate BIOS files. So I'm just going to copy over my monster-sized BIOS pack. 
If you've got a BIOS pack, then copy it over. And if you haven't, then you'll definitely need to get some BIOS files, depending on what systems you're wanting to play. Now that the BIOS files are copied, I'm going to start populating the ROM folders. One bit of advice here is that it's safest to assume that when it comes to systems other than Arcade and probably Neo Geo for the standalone emulators, it is best to use unzipped files. They might take up a little bit more space, but at least you can be confident they will run. So now that we have the BIOS and ROMs on the card, it's time to eject it, put it back in the Mio Mini, and take a closer look at Bastard OS. Looking into the game console section, if we take a look at the individual consoles, you can see the games that I dropped in there. Those test files are put there by Bastard OS so that the system will show up on the screen if you haven't populated those consoles with ROMs. Moving on to the apps and programs, the first option is for RetroArch shortcuts, and by default this is turned off. The systems we saw in the game console section are the standalone emulators, but turning this option on opens the Mio Mini up to being able to play all sorts of other systems through the use of RetroArch. When we turn this on, we'll get a new top-level option for RetroArch, and any consoles we select from the installer, which I'll cover shortly, will appear in the new RetroArch section. The next option down is the file manager, and luckily this is the English language version. The Bastard Manual is the information we saw at the tail end of the installation process, explaining about key combinations to adjust the volume and brightness, etc. Play activity is another feature pulled from Onion OS and shows you, as the name suggests, which games you've played and how much time you've spent playing them. The next option is RetroArch, and this will give you full access to all of RetroArch, should you wish to tweak anything. There's a terminal app if you really want to get into fiddling around with the setup, a thank you section where the developer thanks everyone whose code he's used to build this, and then finally, the bastard installer. For anyone who's used Onion, this will be very familiar. Just select whatever systems you would like to play and a shortcut will be set up for you in the RetroArch section. There are a huge range of systems to choose from, but I'm just going to select the Atari Lynx to demonstrate how it works. And obviously, at this point, I need to pop the card out again and we can see that we now have a new folder for the Lynx among the other ROM folders. So I'm just going to copy a few ROMs into that so we can test things. Now that we've got ROMs for the standalone emulators and one of the RetroArch cores, let's take a look at how these perform. And as you can see, they all perform perfectly well. I've got to say that I far prefer the stock way of doing things. It's just far easier knowing that all I have to do is hit one button to get to what I need, rather than trying to remember button combinations that I rarely seem to be able to remember when I need to remember them. However, if you've seen some of my previous videos about the Mio Mini, and if you haven't, then I'll leave the links to them in the description below. In some of those videos, I lamented the fact that the stock Mio Mini setup only came set up to play certain systems. And I showed you how, to, how I added additional systems to the stock setup. Then Onion OS came out and allowed you to use a massive range of systems. But as fantastic as it is, there was a lot I didn't like about it. And one of those things was the button combinations to do things that were previously just one button press under stock. It just seemed like simplicity had been sacrificed for flexibility. For me, I feel that with Bastard OS, I really have the best of both worlds now. I've got the pick up and play, one button simplicity that I loved from stock, and the flexibility that Onion offers. 
Faster OS isn't perfect, and there are a few rough edges here and there, such as dark text on a dark background in one or two places, and a couple of other weird things I've noticed. But I've had issues with Onion OS as well, and that hasn't stopped people from raving about it. I really hope the developer continues developing this, as I feel that not enough people know about it or have tried it out. And there are areas that I think it would be nice to expand on. The theme is okay, but not one I would choose. So having a theme library like Onion would definitely be a nice to have, for example. Anyway, that's my thoughts on Bastard OS. And if you've got a spare micro SD card, then I'd urge you to try it out. It takes hardly any time to download and set up, and who knows, you might love it. For me, it's now my default front end on my Mi Mini. So what did you think of it? Will you be giving it a try? Let me know what you think in the comments section below, one way or another. I'd love to know what you think.